Yeah, hello everybody, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome to this presentation. My name is Viktor Mischerin from TU Dresden in Germany. And I'm going to share with you some thoughts on simulating process and steps of extrusion-based 3D concrete printing using various numerical approaches. I will not be that detailed as Gianluca. I will rather give an overview of what I think uh, can be done or should be done. <laughs> And um, let me start with the note that even if we limit ourselves to extrusion-based individual approaches, uh, we find within this group very different aspects. And actually, uh, first of all, it's about material concepts and the equipment we use. So um, on the left, you see a very uh, fine filament uh, concrete printing. On the right side, you see really uh, thick filaments and obviously different types of concrete we use here. If you go for uh, large filaments, you can use uh, more or less uh, uh, ordinary concrete with respect to the composition. And of course, the description of such concrete is quite different as if you describe fine mortar. And of course, uh, if you use uh, larger nozzles, it also enables to use um, this kind of concrete. So different uh, geometries of the nozzles, also a different orientation of the nozzles, or horizontal, vertical, and this should be considered uh, when we try to simulate this. On the other hand, um, we have also um, different types of concrete flow with respect to rheological properties. We uh, find here um, this kind of uh, infinite brick extrusion regime for stiff concrete material. Uh, on the other hand, we have here examples for very flowable material where we can say at the beginning it's really self-compacted, but then due to addition of some admixture at the nozzle, it uh, um, yeah, became stiff pretty fast after deposition, after the flow. And then uh, it's of course different approach to this crack material like this. And often we have an example uh, where material flows some a little, a little bit, it's uh, still based on tixotropy. There are no addition of some, uh, let's say, um, uh, uh, admixtures which speed up the hydration process. Good. Um, finally, this is a pretty seldom case. And you see a little movement here, I believe, of, uh, I see no movement at all. Yeah, maybe now. Uh, so you see uh, there's some vibration at the print head. And this is the case where also some energy is introduced uh, specifically for uh, mixtures which are stiff. Uh, it can be a solution uh, to enable the flow and, for example, also um, yeah, enclosure of reinforcement. Well, obviously, these uh, different categories relate to the particular production step, which is uh, here the step number three. It's about deformation of built material during deposition. But there are also other steps we need to consider. This is uh, the transportation of built material to the print head. It's a print head process itself, uh, here extrusion. Then what we discussed already, deposition of built material uh, during um, uh, deposition, deposition or uh, deformation during deposition. And then as a next one, uh, we need to consider when we have many layers, then we might have some problems of a lot carrying capacity of the a layers um, at the bottom uh, due to the weight, self-weight of the print structure, or we have maybe some problems with the uh, structural stability. Well, anyway, for these uh, different steps, we need also different uh, approaches to describe the processes. And this table shows just the physical uh, background. So actually we prepared a paper which is uh, cited here. It's open access paper. So if you are interested, please have a look. Uh, there we provide analytical formula for different um, well, physical processes uh, which we um, address here. For example, we say, okay, one such process is pumping. Uh, we have a physical background for this. We can describe this. Uh, then we have extrusion, we have uh, gravitational flow, etc. But I will not uh, go now into analytics, but rather uh, show the numerical side of the story. And I will start um, with um, uh, I will start with pumping. So uh, pumping is often used uh, in transpiration uh, of mixed concrete to the print head by pushing it through a horse or pipe. And the key phenomenon 
is here the formation of lubrication layer here at the wall of the pipe. Uh, the lubrication layer has considerably low viscosity than bulk concrete, and its formation leads to a significant reduction in the frictional resistance between concrete pipe, uh, concrete and the uh, uh, pipe wall. Okay, um, well, you probably know this analytical formulas uh, suggested a few decades already ago by Kaplan and his co-workers. Uh, you see also here the major parameters we need to consider. This is uh, rheological parameters uh, according to Bingham for lubrication layer and actually for, in the second case of more flowable concrete, actually for uh, the uh, uh, yeah, uh, core part of concrete here. So um, what I want to emphasize that we go also for numerical approaches, so we can go the same way, we can subdivide a concrete in the pipe uh, into lubricating layer and then the plug in the middle. And this plug can be completely shared or less shared depending on the material properties. You can use uh, this kind of uh, uh, tribometer or so-called tribometer to, uh, uh, yeah, to measure rheological properties you need for characterization uh, or description of the lubricating layer for numerical analysis, and you use viscometer to get the values for uh, the description of the core material. So, um, of course, there are also some analytical formulas for prediction of movement of concrete, as I showed before, but numerical simulation offers additional insights into the specifics of the concrete flow in a pipe or horse. In this case, uh, uh, we use the uh, CFD model um, and it provided also good prediction actually of the pressure we need uh, for a particular transportation rate. But um, actually uh, what we also see, for example, uh, the effect of uh, the pipe diameter, and you see a, a reduction by 20% only here from the left to the right, uh, leads to a pronounced increase in velocity in the pipe and also in quite pronounced change in the proportion of the sheared material region, which is here, to the unsheared plug, which is here, and again, compare what you see on the left side. Good, uh, I move now to uh, the next step, which is extrusion. And uh, here, the material is forced through a nozzle reduction, and the discharge uh, rate uh, of fresh concrete um, through the nozzle opening must occur exactly at the specified um, uh, number, uh, volume per time unit, and possibly with low energy consumption. So, and it should, of course, be synchronized with the, um, with the movement of the print head. So, you see here uh, some examples where uh, this didn't work properly, and uh, even if we have uh, relatively little uh, extrusion errors, it can pile up in a print element and uh, lead to a considerable damage. Um, so when we tried to analyze what happens in uh, this kind of extruder, we find out uh, that um, we uh, yeah, often use or mostly use screw extrusion. And this is a process which is not very well uh, describable, I would say. Um, we don't have formulas for estimating force flow rate relationship based on the rheological properties of fresh concrete. Indeed, even estimated the flow rate is uh, challenging for such complex fluid as fresh concrete. Uh, this works actually best for progressive cavity pumps, uh, which we uh, have been, uh, which, uh, we are, which are used often in the context of 3D concrete printing. Um, and uh, what formulas you see here, it's actually just for uh, the uh, quantity of the material, so for the uh, flow rate, but we cannot predict analytically uh, the force needed for this flow. So here we need to go for actually numerical simulation. And uh, in this case, uh, we used uh, distinct climate method. This is a still work in progress. But what we figure out that it works, um, and also examples shown by Gianluca show that it's a really good approach. What um, I want to emphasize additionally, that we can also analyze what happens in the print head. And you see here also the areas which seems to be a little bit problematic, and we can use this kind of analysis also 
uh, for improvement of the printhead geometry and uh, uh, the system, uh, uh, entire system. So here, again, example, uh, uh, we succeeded to simulate various scenarios of both uh, deficient and good synchronization of the material delivery and the print head velocity. So good on here on the right side and not that good on the left and in the middle. Well, uh, I come back now to the deformation uh, behavior of built material during deposition. Uh, you uh, saw this, this case is earlier already, and I just want to uh, emphasize that these uh, two cases on the left, they can be described pretty well by using analytical formulas. Um, yeah, I just indicate here how it works. So you see it's a pretty simple. It's all about the rotation of flow or excess of the rotation of flow. But if we go to the third case where we have just some flow, but not very much, uh, and we still want to clearly uh, predict or describe the shape of the filament deposited, uh, then we need numerical approaches. And in this case, uh, we used um, a particle finite element method. And uh, you see here, this is a work published in preprint. So please uh, have a look for details. So it's again, uh, yeah, well accessible. And then uh, after some calibration, which we see on this slide, we went for uh, some parameter studies, and I will not go here too much in details, but you see that we uh, changed here the uh, position of the print head. We, uh, uh, we, we changed here inlet velocity, and uh, we uh, changed here the print velocity, and, et, cetera, et cetera, by adjusting at the same time uh, the um, inlet velocity or not adjustment. And this is... Uh, what, what you see here uh, looks like we have, with such numeric methods, really a very efficient tool to shape of the print processes, uh, yeah, to, to uh, develop some print strategies which deliver the results we needed, but of course also yeah, uh, be um, yeah, aware what kind of geometries we produce because they are also, uh, of course, very relevant for structural design eventually. Good. Uh, finally, I come to the mechanical behavior after the position. We have here two modes, uh, material failure and loss of stability. A material failure, this is, uh, I believe, very uh, well-known phenomena. So it's about the behavior of the, here, the first layer or the, the bottom layer. And again, it's a gravity force acting here. Um, different to material deposition, uh, just of one layer, we have here uh, just the starting point of a, a static yield stress. And then we have also increase in the material resistance due to exotropy or also uh, later on due to hydration. So uh, we have, of course, some um, analytical description for the development um, of, uh, of uh, these properties. Um, when we go to, let us say, more complex situation, um, then uh, we certainly need uh, some numeric analysis. And this is, first of all, if we want also to consider the additional pressure by material to your deposition. And this is uh, just briefly presentation of some results from the study where we again use this particle finite element method. You see that we have here considerable uh, pressure due to yeah, deposition of concrete. So we should actually consider this additional pressure due to flow of concrete um, um, and this might affect also uh, to some extent the stability uh, of uh, load can capacity of uh, the uh, structure. Um, concerning the stability, uh, we have a very simple formula suggested by Nikola Rosevich. This is on the left side. It's about actually elastic behavior, purely elastic behavior uh, of um, the yeah, um, actively uh, simple geometrical element. Uh, there are some more elaborate formulas uh, for design where we have different uh, actually boundary conditions. But if you go to even more complex geometries, uh, as uh, shown also in the presentation by Jean-Luc, then you need numeric analysis. And um, the first um, 
a publication on this, I believe, was by the group of from Eidhofen. They used finite element analysis and showed uh, how important this stability issue is. Uh, this is another example uh, from uh, Cheveka uh, Consulting and um, what they showed that, of course, it's um, first of all uh, here lone uh, segments of the wall where we can expect uh, a loss of stability and uh, on the other hand here in some, some corner uh, regions, it it's works quite nicely. So, and basically this is all to summarize, uh, you see that at the moment we need uh, really different approaches, numerical approaches to uh, simulate different uh, process steps uh, I hope uh, this um, is not kind of an <laughs> end of the story. So uh, I hope that uh, one approach or another can be really used for different steps. And uh, I believe presentation by Gianluca showed that it's uh, possible, at least in principle, right? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. Uh, this is amazing work that you guys are doing on this, on, on, on this topic. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. The, the, the multiple different models can be used in different regimes. So the, there is Jan Vosalik asks, does your model allow to take into effect changing temperature of the material? Well, uh, not yet. Um, actually, we are really happy that we somehow managed uh, to <laughs> catch uh, uh, rheological properties correctly and introduce uh, uh, these uh, properties into the model and uh, to simulate also the boundary condition properly. So temperature is uh, not really, wasn't as uh, uh, yet on the agenda, uh, but for sure we can uh, consider uh, the effect of temperature on rheology of concrete and then uh, we can in this way uh, introduce the effect uh, on the process. Yeah, I think this is uh, calls for another session that we organize on the effect of temperature, <laughs> temperature, moisture, transport, right? Uh, on, on, on the effect of the printing, we have all these uh, drying issues when we print concrete and stuff like absolutely, that. So, absolutely. Uh, I do have a quick question before we move on. Um, for the pumpability, I think you had a very nice slide that explains very well what the issues are. And um, a, a, in our experience, of course, there are two things that play a role, which is one, of course, the rheological property of material, and then the rheological property of the interface of the material with the, the, you know, the tube or whatever the, you're pumping through. Uh, and we have found difficulties in really deconvoluting these two things. In other words, you know, you, you can, with the model, you can change both. <laughs> and so it's difficult somehow to understand, especially for the interface, what properties uh, you should use. So do you have any experience or any experimental test that you've done to specifically characterize yeah, the yeah, interface? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. It's, it's really key issue here. Uh, the properties of lubrication layer is different or are different uh, from those of uh, uh, the uh, concrete somewhere <laughs> further from the right. uh, pipe wall. Um, and indeed, it's possible to estimate these properties. Uh, however, the kind of an unknown uh, value is the thickness of lubricating layer which is, however, not that, let us say, crucial for this kind of analysis. So if we say, okay, we um, estimate the thickness of, let us say, two or three millimeters, so uh, we can uh, yeah, uh, use the data from, let us say, triple meter test. Triple meter is not really a very exact word, but we don't have another better, <laughs> the better one. So you can use uh, these values, uh, basically the um, uh, these Bingham parameters for this kind of a smeared lubricating layer, and and we get get a good experience with this. Of course, it's a kind of a um, yeah, nearly engineering approach. Uh, it's from a scientific point of view, it uh, uh, could be done better, and we are actually trying to develop a model where also a formation of lubrication layer and also changes in the thickness of lubrication layer are um, uh, possible to kind of uh, to simulate 
uh, and it's specifically important in the bands and also when it comes to, to transfer changes in, in the diameter of the pipes. Uh, so this is quite a challenge, but we have a project on this uh, running and I hope uh, we will be able to present some progress uh, soon enough. And so we had one more question come in uh, for Victor. How do you simulate layers knitting together? Well, I, I, I'm not sure well, if I got it correctly. Can you repeat, yeah. please? If it, How do you simulate layers knitting together? I believe they mean the interlayer bonding. Oh, <laughs> well, it's, it's not a five-second question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, not, not really. Uh, so it's, um, it, it's, it's uh, it, what, what I showed, it's really about rheology, right? It's about flow behavior. So what is asked here, it's already transition from fluid to solid. Uh, and this is this can be done uh, by using, for example, distant line map method. So uh, we showed this concept a few years ago, uh, not necessary for 3D printing, but in general. Uh, but uh, this is this is quite advanced thing, and we uh, haven't had uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> gone that far yet uh, for 3D printing. But it's it's really good point, really good point to address this uh, phase change. It's a really very exciting topic. Yeah, and the, the, the overall transition from fluid to solid, this is a still an open question uh, that, uh, you know, uh, how we go with one model from, from, from the time zero to time 10 years or 100 years. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so thank you again, Victor. Uh, 